Hey Journey Church, welcome. My name's Rob and this is my buddy David here. And we're here to talk about the guide that we've created at Journey Church, the prayer guide called Pray First. Um, we're going to be coming to this in this book from page 10. Um, that's where we're going to be today. And if you have a copy of the book, great. You can follow along with us. If not, they can be picked up at any service on a Sunday here at the church. But also you can go to journeychurch.org backslash pray. And you can follow along with us right there and have an electronic guide for you. But this really was created. We are in a time and just feel it our heart at Journey Church is to really get engaged in prayer and the yes. power of prayer. And we know sometimes prayer cannot be easy all the time for some people. And we're just not here to teach, but we're just, it's really a guide. We've created mm -hmm. a guidebook and, and several different models you'll be learning mm -hmm. over, the, over the past next few weeks. Also in the past weeks, if you haven't seen them, um, you're, you can go back to our Facebook page at journeychurch.org mm -hmm. or you can find the previous videos on YouTube if you want to watch the other videos before this one. Um, but this week brings us in to page 10, which talks about forgiveness. And, you know, David and I have talked for quite a few years Amen. about forgiveness. And I know that's near and dear to both of our hearts Amen. and our walks. Yes. Um, and on page 10, it says, forgive us, give, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Um, and it's got a scripture that goes with it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Um, I don't know about Rob, but I know for myself, one of the biggest hurdles that I had to get over, the opposite of forgiveness is unforgiveness. And one of the biggest hurdles that I had to get over in my life so that God could really start moving was the unforgiveness part. Um, and at the time, I didn't think that I had the strength to forgive some of the people that I, that I needed to forgive. And I just, um, I asked God for that strength and he gave it to me. Um, made some pretty hard amends and asked for forgiveness. And once those was done, God just started moving mighty mountains in my mm -hmm. life. And that unforgiveness, if you hold that within, can create an own personal torment. And that personal torment can keep you separated from God, which is what prayer is trying to draw you closer to. So unforgiveness is not a good thing, but also can be a very difficult thing. And, you know, think of forgiveness. This is a, this is a gift that, that God has offered to us. And we know that unforgiveness, he, he gave that through the gift of his son on the cross. John 3.16 will bring you right to that, right? So, but the key is for the, us as believers, and the key for us to keep engaging in great prayer is not only to be intentional about it, mm. but also we need to receive that gift from God. You need to understand that God offered this up to us. Amen. You know, he's offering that your past sins are forgiven. Your present sins are forgiven. Your future sins are forgiven. But the only way that you can live in that is you have to receive that mm. and feel that. And it's, and it's a great scripture. And part of how we do that is through confession in our prayer. Amen. Wouldn't you agree, David? Amen. One of the hard things that I had to get the, the hurdle over is um, I found when I had the strength to ask others forgive for forgiveness um, um, and prayed about it, that, that, that came pretty easily once I prayed about it. Um, one of the hurdles that I really struggled with was forgiving myself. Mm. Um, yes. And that one was me a hard too. one, and that held me held me in bondage for a lot of years because some of the things that I did in my past weren't that pleasant. Um, and somebody shared with me one time, if the Father forgives us, who are we not to forgive ourselves? Mm. And when that was spoken to me, the unforgiveness, the asking the Father for forgiveness, I got to the point that I could ask him, and somebody else told me that, you know, once you've asked him for forgiveness, he forgets it. So if he forgets it, who am I to continue to Amen. hold on to it? Amen. You know, he, he, he forgave us because we, we as human beings can tend to create a barrier between yeah. ourselves and God when we have unforgiveness in our life. Um, you know, he gave us this gift to break down that barrier yeah. so that we may have relationship with him. Um, a scripture from Isaiah 43 tells us this. He forgave us because he loves us mm. and wanted the barrier between him and mankind removed. 
in order to make way for mm. relationship. So mm. it, it, it's easy Amen. it's easy for us to not even Amen. notice these barriers, right? Amen. Like I could be mad at my sister and she's got to say she forgives me before I say anything. And the key to forgiveness, the number one key I think, is that forgiveness is something you walk through for you. Amen. It's about you. Amen. It's not that person who you claim hurt against. It's not that person who you claim anger against. Walking through unforgiveness is a chance for you Amen. to put down that barrier and allow God to now start to change your heart. Because it is a heart change. Yeah. Huge part for me was realizing that, um, and every time that I had to approach somebody that I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to be able to forgive, I prayed about it prior to going in. And every single time the Holy Spirit told me the same thing, go in with no expectations. If I go to ask about it, somebody for forgiveness and I'm expecting them to get all excited, that might not happen. Mm -hmm. But if I go in with no expectations and ask somebody to forgive me, no matter what response I get, I've done what God has asked me to do. Amen. And I agree those expectations just create another barrier, which you've created, because you create that expectation and then you go to forgive, but you, you're expecting somebody else to say, I'm sorry too. Well, then you've just put up that barrier Amen. again. So it's really a heart check. You know, check Amen. your heart and... Uh, you know, really just get with God and, and ask Him. If it's something that you're feeling or something that's Amen. keeping you from Him, who else is going to answer that question but Him? Amen. You know, ask God, check my heart, God. What is it that I might need to seek forgiveness with Amen. you? What is something that I'm doing that, um, you know, we don't ask for forgiveness. It's been given to us. You don't have Amen. to ask for permission. You don't have to ask Amen. God to forgive you. He did. You just need to receive it. And that's mm. that's where yes. the asking comes in is that we don't receive it. We don't understand that barrier that we've created and not receiving it. Um, so once you get that personal forgiveness, like Amen. Dave said, I, I was my situation was the same as the things that I went through. I was, I was ready to forgive and forgive for people that offended me or hurt me, but I didn't forgive myself. And I was still Amen. at a point where like, God, what am I doing? What, where, where's, what am I creating here? What's, what's the division? What's, what's holding me back? And that was forgiving myself for some of the things I had done, Amen. you know, not only to people, but to God and, uh, just seek that from him. And, um, great things will come from that and the mm. heart will begin to change. And once you do that piece of forgiveness, I felt forgiving yourself. Now it opens the door for you to really mm. walk through those times with people that you feel offended or hurt by Amen. as well. Amen. And um, it goes back to what Rob said. It, it is truly about the heart. And for me, it has to be about my heart doing what God has asked me to do. Um, um, and, and like I said, with no expectations. I might not get what I expect. So I stopped going in with expectations. Then when the forgiveness, and sometimes it will happen that, it, that you're not forgiven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I can walk away because um, with a peaceful heart because I know that I've done what God has asked me to do. Yes. Um, I do know unforgiveness also can um, um, keep you stagnant sometimes with God. Um, one of the things that I learned early on the prayer team, um, if somebody comes up to be prayed for, is to, to, to specifically ask them, um, first question, do you have any unforgiveness in your heart? Mm -hmm. Um, because I have prayed, I have prayed with people that I have had to turn around and go back and sit back and say the Holy Spirit said that you had unforgiveness, and watched God work when that person did get the forgiveness taken care of and their healing come to pass. Mm -hmm. So um, I encourage everybody today that if you have unforgiveness or if you're not sure that you might be carrying one, something that I used to do is um, I used to pray and ask God if there's any unclean feelings toward anybody, please speak to mm -hmm. me and let me know that they're there. Mm -hmm. and David makes a great point here about prayers that we've talked about it a lot over the past year in this one word, and that's called intention. Amen. Now go after God intentionally. Go after him intentionally. Get right to the point of what it is that you're seeking his guidance on. Um, you know, if it's a certain person, pray for that person. Amen. Pray with God and say, God, I need to hear you on what I should do with this particular person. Um, if it's a certain situation, pray for that situation intentionally. 
Um, it is time, and, and we, we, we've talked about spiritual warfare, which is actually one of the upcoming sessions yes. here, is that it's, now's the time. It's time. With everything that's going on in the world, or everything it just seems upside down and, and chaotic is the word. Yes. So we have to be intentional. There's no Amen. time for Christians to, to dance around and, and walk around these subjects and just go after what it is that's holding your heart back from that complete utter unconditional love which was modeled by Jesus and I think Amen. unconditional love is something that we all strive for Amen. Jesus modeled unconditional love well if you think about it can you have unconditional love if you have unforgiveness in your heart truth you can't it's impossible so those two you know think of unconditional love over here and forgiveness over yeah. here and there's an arrow with two pointy ends pointing at each other you can't have one without Amen. the other Amen. so if you strive to walk and and live the model life like jesus did you must go through this forgiveness Amen. piece of your walk to experience that unconditional love and love unconditionally Amen. there is no other way around it so you know with that being said you're probably wondering what this is <laughs> on the table so um, you know, David walked in with it, so I asked him. He gave us a little backstory, even though I was hoping to hear it the first time with you guys. But a yeah. uh, little story. It's great, and I think this is where we'll, we'll, we'll venture into next, and then we'll, we'll close out with some prayer. But, David, yeah. why don't you tell us about this orange cone? For all that don't know, I was in the hospital earlier this year, and I, and I had a good friend that put um, a post on social media, Jacob Bryan, and it... Um, um, he was sitting back describing my passion for praying for, for other people. And he sat back and it, um, in the post he put on there that um, David would pray over a traffic cone if it would bring glory to God. Um, well, when I got home from the hospital and everything, I told Ashley, uh, um, I says, I, gotta get, I got to get a traffic cone. Um, so this has become, most women probably wouldn't allow this thing in their <laughs> dining room. But this has become a fixture in our dining room, and you would be amazed at how much this orange cone, when I leave the house in the morning time, when I get up and go out to the table, I see the orange cone. When I'm there at nighttime getting ready to go to bed, I see the orange cone. And thank you, Jacob, for bringing the cone up because I'm going to speak this. I already had a strong prayer life to begin with, but seeing this prayer cone reminds me on those moments that I might not want to pray that I still need to pray. So another piece of the prayer life and, and to get better and to add something, what is it that you may have in your home Amen. that is a reminder that I need to pray? Amen. I need to pray today, and, and that's great to have. You know, for David, it's an orange cone. For somebody else, it Amen. could be, I don't know, a banana on the table. Whatever Amen. whatever it might be, whatever it's whatever you can do to remind yourself that you need to pray today, Amen. go for it. Pick it up. Amen. Put it in put it in there. Steph, I don't know if you want an orange cone in, <laughs> in, in, in our future living room, but um, you know, you're giving me an idea, David. So but you know, something like that is just the, the, the point of it is that this reminds Ashley and David. Amen how important their prayer life is. No matter how good it is already, no matter how much we do that, we still yes. need reminders yes. from time to time. You know, we, we can stumble and fall on our daily Amen. lives when it comes to those things, especially with all the distractions we've talked about here. Amen. So, but just get after God, seek that forgiveness, and you know, is there anything else you want to add? One quick thing. Um, for most of y'all that know me know that I'm in recovery. And one of the steps in recovery talks about... Um, doing a daily inventory. So what I've tried to make it a practice of is at the end of the day before I close my eyes, one of the scriptures in the Bible talks about don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. When we're talking about forgiveness, I try to make it a point when I close my eyes at nighttime that I don't have bad feelings toward nobody. Um, and that has when I started trying to live that scripture out, sometimes that's a hard one to live out. Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, with practice, it's getting better and better. Mm -hmm. so. so we hope through this Pray First series and this, and this prayer guide that uh, we've created at Journey Church that you do live out God each day in your life. It's This is just a model. This is just Amen. something to get you over that discomfort. Maybe it's something to get you through. Maybe it's a reminder that you need. Maybe it's Amen. a brother or sister that you need to spend time with. 
and learn about prayer. Because let's face it, it's not easy for everybody to pray. I know some people that have a very hard time doing yeah. it, um, whether it's in front of crowds, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's with your spouse, um, whatever it might be. But our heart at Journey is that you continue to dig into these, these series that we're having. And just a reminder, journeychurch.org backslash pray we'll get you this digitally Amen. we will have these books in each service and then go back to our facebook page and our youtube page and go back and see some of the previous lessons so david is going to lead us out in some prayer and uh thank you for joining us thank you and um before i pray remember one thing and i think mary Jo said it a couple of weeks ago praying is just a conversation amen it's just like me talking to rob amen. i can talk to the Holy Spirit, just like I've sat here and talk, talk, talk to Rob the whole time. So Amen. let's pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity for us to, to be able to do this. Um, I know that there's um, some places in the world that this would not ever be allowed. But Father God, we thank you for being able to do this. And I'm going to speak this. Rob or me at any point in time, if people Amen. that are watching yes. this ever have any questions yes. about praying, Father God, please send them to us. One of my biggest passions in life is being able to pray over other people. But it took it took some people feeding into my yes. life to get me to that point. Yes. Father God, I pray as we progress through this book, Father God, if there's people that have questions about praying, that they will reach out to the people. Let us love on you and let us teach you what we have been taught about being able to pray. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you get to where you can do it comfortably. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.